Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Bethany Urban Farm. Uh, today I am performing some soil tests in my new garden here in Victoria, British Columbia, and I thought I would take you along and show you um, some of the things that I'm doing to get a better sense of what the soil is like in this garden. I'm also reading an excellent book right now, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what I'm learning from that book. So right now you can see, this is actually why I decided to come grab the camera, because I'm filling up these jars with samples um, of the soil from that area of my garden right over there. So I'm taking samples from specific areas of soil and then labeling them. So this will say south fence line, um, this one is for the west fence line. And then what you want to do, um, and I'm learning this from the book that I'm reading right now, it's a pretty simple test. Uh, kids probably would love this. Um, you fill up your jar, sorry for the backlight here, um, you fill up your jar and you mark a little line where the soil um, is filled to. So you can't see it too well there, but I've just put a line where um, that soil reaches. So here's my sample area from the uh, west fence line. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised. You can see it doesn't look like the greatest quality. Um, on the top here there's lots of gravel and rocks probably from when they were developing this house, but if you dig down you can see it's really nice quality. Pretty good loam there. I would say there's pretty good proportions of sand and clay. And that's what the jars will tell us. They'll tell us the proportions of sand and clay. And then over here is where I tested the south fence line. You can see the soil is quite similar. Um, something I'm going to do after I'm done doing the jar test is to fill up these little holes with water and do a drainage test. So here is another bed. I'm using this bed mostly for ornamentals. Um, and I'm going to do, I think the soil is quite similar, but I am going to do a test from this area as well. And the, the garden is not very big, but you still want to get um, different samples from all the areas that you're planting in. And then you can see I've also put up some deer fencing. I'm just using the um, fishing line trick because I read that it works pretty well. And of course, because I'm renting, I need something temporary and inexpensive. So I have a fishing line run all around the perimeter of my beds at one foot and about two and a half foot heights. So this soil is where I'm planning on doing an in-ground veggie garden. Um, it's already pretty amended. I dumped out the soil from my containers in the fall and I layered it up with some leaves and um, cardboard and newspaper and stuff. I'm gonna dig down deeper though and see what is the quality of the soil underneath the, I, I probably put about a foot, six inches to a foot of amendment on top in the fall, so I'm going to dig down about six inches and see, um, see what the soil is like under there. family of robins just watching me because I'm digging holes in the ground and they're like oh my god she's giving us a free buffet of worms. So here I'm just gonna fill up these jars to the top with some water. Double check that I've marked them. Yeah. And then let it settle. I'm just gonna screw those lids on top of these jars and then give them a good shake and then let them settle and see what we're left with. Shake it up. So you can see it's starting to settle here. That is a lot more sand than I would have guessed. So the bottom layer is going to be the sand because that's the largest particles. So the largest particles will settle to the bottom. 
and then silt is going to be the middle layer and then the clay is whatever has not settled because the clay particles are so tiny that it takes them uh, quite a while to settle. Hardly any clay. Um, I would say that it's about half sand and then a quarter silt and a quarter clay. This one probably has even less clay. Looks like the silt is mostly it's actually quite different. So this is why you want to take different samples from different areas of the garden. Hang on, let me get a good spot. Because um, there can be vastly different, especially in developed neighborhoods, like where people have built houses. It can really vary um, from spot to spot. Um, so like these two jars are both from the fence line, just one of them is perpendicular to the other spot. And I would say that this spot has maybe 50-50 sand and silt with hardly any clay. All right, let's take a look at our third jar. Okay, so this one is from the ornamental bed. So this one is mostly silt. There's a little layer of sand at the bottom. The middle part is all silt. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard for me to see. Probably harder for you to see on the video. And then the top layer is clay. All right, our last jar. This one is the one that has had the amendment done to it. Um, but I was able to dig down pretty deep, about a foot deep. Yeah, and that is mostly sand as well, it looks like. With probably, yeah, half, 50% sand and then 25% of each silt and clay. All right, so I'm going to go back to my awesome book that I'm reading and look at the chart that they provide of the different proportions of sand, silt, and clay and see if we can give a name to all these different soils. This is so much fun. I'm having so much fun. I hope you're having fun too. All right, so I just brought my phone out to my soil samples and I jotted down the percentages and I'm going to plot them on my graph. So starting out with the south fence line. Okay, so I'm going to do this from 50% sand and then 20% silt, or 25% silt. So there's my point there for the south fence line. And on the west fence line, 50, 40. That's 50% sand, 40% silt. East bed is only 25% sand. So we're going to draw a line up here. This is obviously not very precise, but it does give you a good ballpark. 25% clay. Okay, and then finally we have our west bed. 45% sand, 15% clay, so right here, this is the spot we want, so I'm going to circle. So based on that graph, we can see that um, the south fence line is clay soil. And um, the west fence line is clay slash clay loam. So in between clay and clay loam on the lower end of clay. And then we have the east bed is silt loam, right in the middle there, silt loam. West bed is um, silt loam as well, bordering on loam. So that makes sense. The west bed is the closest we have to loam because that's the most that I've, um, that's the most amendment that I put in. And now I am coming in and doing a drainage test. You can see the water seeping down here. I just filled it up to the top of this hole with water and it's draining very consistently uh, and rapidly in a matter of seconds. And here is this one. Okay. 
And I'll come back to that one. And then finally, have this guy. The soil kind of looks pretty waterlogged on the surface here. It's quite cracked um, and silty, I guess. Um, and yeah, it's not draining very fast. So I will set a timer and see how long that takes. So a couple days later, um, it ended up taking about 10 to 20 minutes for the soil to drain in the beds on the fence line, um, where the soil is clay on one of them and then uh, clay loam on the um, the side where there is leaf mulch and stuff kind of decomposing in the ground, so the soil is a little bit better. Um, in the amended bed, it only took a couple of seconds. It drained pretty much immediately, and that's really what you're looking for, um, especially for a vegetable or flower garden where you need some really well-draining soil. Um, of course, you can plant in clay. It's just going to be a little bit more challenging, and you're going to have to um, make sure that the soil doesn't become waterlogged. Um, I actually forgot to film a clip of the soil drainage test in the east bed um, down here. Um, and now the ground is a little bit frozen, so um, I will just tell you that it took a similar amount of time, um, probably 10 minutes for the soil to drain, or the water to drain in the east bed. Um, and the east bed is, I believe, silt loam. I'll put it down, uh, down below here. Um, so it's a little bit easier draining than the fence line, but it's still not great. And because I am planting directly in the ground there, I'm going to have to um, keep an eye on that um, for growing and make sure that um, the plants have an adequate um, supply of water, not too much water, but that they do have access to the water. Because that can sometimes happen if you have really water retentive soil, um, sometimes the soil actually hogs all the water and doesn't give it to the plants. So um, something to keep my eye on. Um, I hope this video was informative to you. I will link the book down below. I highly recommend checking it out. It's by um, the publishers Cool Springs Press. They have great books. Um, so I'll put that link down below. Um, please do check it out. It's an excellent book. And I could never cover all of the information that it gives. Um, but I hope this video is informative and I hope you have fun growing your soil. And I will see you next time. Bye.